Hello lover friends, this week we will create quietly, sync better, group our tasks and unfortunately we have to disable some relationships. Let's go! Let's start with scheduled tasks. They usually look like this where you define them one at a time, but not anymore. Now you can group them, which makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Thank you, Istiak. Next, let me show you about the new quietly method. You probably know that Laravel throws a ton of events for a lot of things that you do in your Laravel application, like creating a new podcast. And this is good because then you can listen for them and hook into this. So let me just run this here. We're creating a new podcast. You can see we get a podcast back. But in the background, a lot of other things are happening because a lot of events are thrown. Let me show you. We're bringing them in here by enabling this code here and import this class. This is the facade here. So we're seeing with the asterisk, we are listening for all the events and we're just going to dump them. And inside Tinkerwell, and inside Tinkerwell, if we run this again, you will see a lot of events here are being shown like saving event, booted event, and more. Mostly you don't care about them, but sometimes you don't want them to be thrown. And there are ways in level how you can achieve this by doing stuff quietly. If we go back to application and search for methods that end with quietly, you can see we have quite a bunch of them here in a soft delete trait, force delete quietly, restore quietly, in the builder, um, in the factory, and all those methods do the stuff that they normally do, like creating something, but they're doing this quietly, meaning no events will be thrown. And one new that we have here is on the builder, which is create quietly, which we didn't have before. So let's go back here and let's use this new method, quietly. Let's run this again. You still see that we get a bunch of events here, but not as much as before. A reason for this is also that we're still listening for all events. If we just take a look at the ones from Eloquent, which we can get by just using this syntax here. Let's run this again. And you can see we only see two events anymore, which is the one for booting and booted, which still will be thrown, but all the other, other events regarding our creating the podcast are not shown anymore. And we get back directly our podcast. So if you want to prevent events being thrown when creating a new model, you can now use this new create quietly method from the Laravel builder. Thank you, Bram. Also new is better syncing in Laravel. In this application, we have podcast and then we have text and you can attach text to a podcast. And we can take a look if this specific one has already any text attached and it has not because we get an empty collection here back when we call the text relationship. All right, so how can we add one? We can use the relationship method directly and then use the sync method. And here I can provide, for example, tag number one. And then let's also return here the tags, which gets returned automatically by Tinkerwell. And you can see here, this is the result from this method here. We have now one tag attached to this podcast. If we want to provide two, there are a couple of ways we can do. One is by providing an array with the IDs. So tag one ID and tag number two ID. Let's run this and you can see now we have two tags attached. So this works. What also works is by providing an eloquent collection, which we get, for example, if we call all of our tags here. Let's run this and you can see now three tags were attached to this podcast because in this other database, we only have three items. So this also works. But now something new, which you can also do, which didn't work before, is by providing an array of the models itself. So like this, tag one and tag two, let's run this. This is now also working, which was not before. So this is something that you can now use as well. Thank you, Dia. And last, let's talk about factories where we also have an improvement. In this test, I want to make sure if I get a new podcast and then call this get likes method that it should be 10, which I'm testing here. Also be aware that I'm using here the make method instead of the create method, which just gives me a new podcast instant, but doesn't store it in the database. So if we take a look at how many podcasts we have in the database, since we're using the refresh database trait here, we should have zero and we don't have anyone, which is good. 
but this podcast is also connected to a user. Let's check this out. Let's give me the user here. And you can see here, I get a user instance back here. And if we now check out what about the database, so how many users do we have inside the database? We have one in the database, which is the one which comes with my podcast. So why is this the case? Because inside my podcast factory, I have set here that whenever we create a new factory for my podcast, for the user ID, which is mandatory, give me a new user, which helps a lot if you need different related models. But yeah, in this case, it's a bit strange because we're intentionally using the make method so that we don't have anything in the database, but still we have something in the database. For this test, it probably doesn't matter because we don't care. But the bigger your application gets, the more tests you have, you will run into issues with this because, yeah, maybe your user model, your user factory also needs an organization. And maybe then just by creating a podcast, we are creating a user, we are creating an organization and maybe something else. So this gets a little bit messy and is, and is maybe not what you would expect. So we can now prevent this with a new method called without parents. Let's try this again. If we now try to get back the user, let's see what this gives us. This gives us now null because all parent items are now null by default. And this also means if we now try to check how many users we have inside the database, you will see that this is also now zero, which is exactly what we would expect here. So this is a very nice way to make sure when you use the without parents method on your factories that you just create the instance that you need here and not parent models, which you don't need for this test. Thank you, Andrew. That wraps it for this week. Let me know which of the shown features you like the most in the comments and see you the next time. Bye.